Hello everyone and welcome back to another brand new episode of What the Throne, the Collider Game of Thrones podcast, our weekly podcast about Game of Thrones, where myself, Dennis Den, and here with Ashley Victoria Robinson. We're talking about Game of Thrones. You know, the, right now we the episodes are on. We're just saw, watched the second episode, so we're, we're going to be talking about stuff that happened there, but specifically tied to one subject, something that 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 sparked our interest. And I think the one thing well, there was several things in there. It was a a lot of stuff to unpack in the episode. <laughs> but I think the one thing uh, I think both of you, uh, you and me wanted to talk about was the character of Jamie Lannister mm-hmm. and whether or not one, ha- has he been redeemed yet or will he be redeemed in a future episode mm-hmm. uh, concerning the crimes? And we ended last episode with, with you know, that kind of meme-worthy uh meeting of eyes with Jamie Lannister and Bran. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you see all the the memes out there, they're they're pretty pretty funny. Bran uh, is like low-key the most hilarious person on Game of Thrones now even though he's been elevated to this incredibly serious role. Yeah. Um so let's let's talk about it. I mean, his character when in the first season, he's like a a typical arrogant Bad boy, you know, who's good looking, but doesn't care about anyone mm-hmm. but himself, does bad, a lot of bad things and very one dimensional. I mean, even towards, you know, it's not just the first pilot episode. You see him like, um, you know, fighting Ned Stark and, and in the streets of King's Landing. Yeah. yeah. So now we've taken his character all the way to where he is now. And he almost has a trial of sorts mm-hmm. in this episode where he. He could be killed. I mean, if they decide, if Daenerys decides, you know what, uh, I think I'm gonna kill you. You killed my father. Uh, Prepare to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they kind of go through a lot of the good things he's done. But let's let's start off with the bad stuff that he's done. I mean, n- most notably, the first thing that we really see him do of note is push Bran out of that window. Yeah, that's the first time we catch up with him in Game of Thrones, but he has a number of crimes up to that point that he's also responsible for as well. And I said this out loud when we were watching the episode, I can't believe that we went from this, you know, sleeping with his sister, Mm -hmm. pushing little kids out a window, and and the scene with Brienne is very moving. And you look at Jamie, and he feels like a real hero. He's come a long way from, you know, the things we do for love, which yeah. every time I say it, the song plays in my brain immediately. Mm-hmm. But the Lannister family, you know, very pre-events of Game of Thrones, they were Targaryen backers, then they switched to back the Baratheons mm-hmm. right when the war was basically over. Mm-hmm. You know, Jamie killed Aerys. Debatable whether that was actually the right thing to do or not, you know, putting mm-hmm. aside the King's Guard oath. But then um, you know, he he's slept with his sister. He betrayed his father. His father didn't want him to join the King's Guard. He did it because he was marrying Cersei off, which Jamie didn't like. He's always been def- Jamie's kind of all of in the beginning, all of the dumb and stupid mm-hmm. and bad Lannister traits personified. And we slowly see him becoming some of the better family traits. Um you know, he basically does wrong by the entire Stark family. He gets Ned murdered. He makes fun of John for uh, going to the wall. Mm-hmm. He pushes Bran out a window. He doesn't protect Sansa from Joffrey. He doesn't protect Arya from anyone. Um, he's supposed to go. Catelyn releases him and trusts Tyrion and sends him back to King's Landing, theoretically, mm-hmm. to trade for Sansa and Arya. He he fails. He doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're all they're all kind of mad at him, and then he winds up betraying Cersei and Tyrion. He betrays Cersei by letting Tyrion go. He kind of doesn't stand up to Cersei and not getting Tyrion arrested mm-hmm. in the first place. Um, and a lot of people um, online have been making a lot of noise about the trial, as you called mm-hmm. it. It's not even his first time going up against Daenerys. He led the Lannister army in their assault yeah. against Danny and her dragons. Now, I don't think him and Daenerys were maybe as aware of each other mm-hmm. as they are in that moment, as we saw in this episode, but they have had a physical confrontation with armies before. So, like, Jamie just has 
so many sins to atone for. Yeah, I, I would say, at least uh, for, from my perspective, when he killed the Mad King, Eris, like that was actually the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because I think what drives his character is the one time, and not the one time now because he's done a lot of good stuff since, but that one big thing that he actually did uh that I think was the right thing, he gets the most shit for. Yes. He gets like, yes. it's like, I I saved a bunch of you, like million people, what they say, a million people in King's Landing? Yes. I, saw, I, yeah. sa- I saved a million people and I get tons of shit. I get called the Kingslayer. People don't trust me. They, people say I'm not an honorable person, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So it's like that thing has been like driving at him like in a way where it's like, oh well, you 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 say I'm the villain. Well, I'm just gonna act like the villain, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, Jamie is actually held up in the books. I think a little more. So I think it's explained a little more by Sandor Clegane is one of the reasons why Sandor doesn't care to be knighted because he says, I know how knights act. I don't want to be a knight. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be like that. And he uh, particularly references Jamie, the Kingslayer. And in the books, Jamie is constantly running from that title and what that means and the results of that. And especially during his journey with Brienne around the time that he gets maimed, he explains to her um, that how bad it was with Ares at the end, what it was like to stand there and smell the bodies cooking yeah. as they were killed and to watch all the slaughter and do and to be able to do nothing about it because you stood there and said a couple words. And it is interesting, as that story becomes more unpacked, through Jamie, that's when I kind of agree with you when I come down on Jamie's side. I'm like, you know what, I think you did the right thing. Someone was going to have to kill Ares anyway. Yeah. It might have been Ned, but also because of the story from as told by Ned mm-hmm. Stark of Jamie sitting on the Iron Throne after. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big Jamie's pride is a big strike against him and one mm-hmm. of the reasons why people don't like him. Yeah. Well, but I mean, he's turned into a much more likable character. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think that transition started with the, the trip with, with Brienne. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, you know, before a, a lot of the stuff, he, we did see like his his relationship with Tyrion. I, I know that um, it's a I big remember, saving grace. I remember in the in the first season, you know, the first time I watched it, mm-hmm. first time of many, because I wasn't a book reader, I didn't know his relationship with Tyrion. Yeah, right? yeah. And later, you get that, you see that, and book readers have told me, okay, yeah, they actually he cares a lot for us. So that added some more depth to his character mm-hmm. and, and something that, that was kind of more in the pro column for yeah. him that that he was willing to – because when you watch the first season not knowing this and he says, oh, we're going to – he wants to get his brother back, mm-hmm. you don't know if that's like because of his relationship or it's like, like his father, which is, oh, he's a Lannister, so by mm-hmm. – by the way people look at things by optics standards, we have to he can't be a prisoner. We have to yeah. get him back. Yeah, so yeah. and then later you learn, no, no, he actually has a a, a very good relationship with his yeah, brother. Yeah, that's a much more Tywin POV. Like, well we're Lannister, so we have to do whatever. All of all of uh, Jamie's crimes too, and I you know, I listed them before and they are they are multitudinous. Mm-hmm. Um all of Jamie's crimes kind of like the the killing of King Ares, they kind of are well motivated mm-hmm. they're like it ends to justify a means like he pushes bran out the window because he loves cersei and he wants to protect cersei he kills ned stark and attacks him in the street because he loves his son joffrey and he mm-hmm. wants to protect joffrey so even if we don't like cersei or we don't like joffrey from that character's perspective he's acting the same way catelyn stark acts he's mm-hmm. acting the same way a lot of other characters act um, but because of who these people around him are it's not until later when he starts acting selfless for Tyrion a little more mm-hmm. and for Brienne and then for Sansa, you know, like for these characters that we like a little bit more that we're like, oh, okay, yeah, Jamie's a pretty good guy now, right? Well, not only that, um, and he mentioned this in in this past episode, we, he didn't seem to have any regret over his actions, Mm-mm. right? Like pushing Bran out the window is like, when he does it, there's no conflict internal conflict with him like oh my god there's a kid he doesn't even look back when he he just yeah he was just like (laughs) bam like and just assumes that he's dead Mm -hmm. you know um he tells catelyn that um when she confronts him when uh he's her prisoner at the end of the first season mm -hmm. like he says what happened and she says why did you push him out the window he says i i hoped you would die yeah you know and he's very it seems flip but jamie was knighted when he was six he mm-hmm. became a member of the Kingsguard when he was 21. That's very young. Mm-hmm. He's been a soldier 
basically his entire life because he was a squire before he was a knight. Um, you know, and to be able to function in those types of stressful situations, you do have to act as quickly as possible mm. with your best judgment and then move on. And Jamie is very much a quintessential soldier and mm. a quintessential soldier of Westeros, which is a brutal place to be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we see, like, he starts to develop uh, much more of a conscience. Mm-hmm. I mean, he helps Brian uh, from getting raped, even though he didn't really have to. And this Absolutely is, not. And this is someone that he's been, you know, verbally, you know, sparring with the yeah. whole time and is part of, you know, the enemy side. So And can do nothing for him. Yeah. Like, it's in no way is it in his best interest to be nice to Brian. She's not rich. Yeah. Well, I mean, her family is probably wealthy, but, like, she doesn't care about money. Mm. She doesn't care about status. She's not going to marry Jamie. Mm. Like, she can offer him nothing, but he does it because it's the right thing to do, and the only thing he has left is his honor, yeah. is being a good dude. Yeah. And then, you know, and Brian brings this up. Like, mm-hmm. he saved him, saved her, and then also got, it, you know, his hand chopped off there i mean you know it's, it's funny because we think of all these good things that that he's done forgetting that oh, okay yeah he's he's done some pretty bad things in the past but i think it's always like a case of like i know you you know one of your favorite characters theon that's right <laughs> yeah totally he is in the same way boat too because he's like oh cool he's you know him and uh sansa are hugging and you know but he has done a lot of bad stuff probably even more so than mm-hmm. than uh, Jamie Lannister, but we're kind of more in the, oh, but he, he helped Sansa more recently. Right. He's helped Yara, et cetera, et cetera. And we liked Theon in the beginning, perhaps a little more than Jamie because he was allied yes. with the Starks. He was a buddy with Jon and Rob. He's a big part of uh, Rob's uprising. He's like, I'm your brother. Yeah. I You have my sword until I die. I'm yeah. here for you. You know, the the Lannisters in the, in the first season, for all intents and purposes, are... are mustache twirling yeah. bad guys and with the exception of Tyrion they don't get more dynamic until later on and and I think you can lay out most characters in Game of Thrones we talked a lot in the review about Daenerys and mm-hmm. is she a good lady <laughs> what's she going to do to Jon do we, you know everyone has um checks and balances and everyone mm-hmm. has messy columns but to see Jamie get to the point where he gives what he does for Bran when he knights her, that's an act of love. And I, I leave it to the viewers yeah. and the listeners, uh, like Haley said, whether or not that's platonic love, romantic love, whether that's like a brothers in arms respect mm-hmm. thing. But like that's an act of kindness and that's an act of love. And that is a gift he is giving to Brienne maybe as the last thing he can ever do for her. Because, I mean, I don't know if she's going to die, but he definitely thinks he's going to die mm-hmm. in this battle. And you don't get to that place from where you are in season one pushing a kid out of a window uh, without a lot of growth. Yes. Yeah, you can't just, like, jump there immediately. You can't take this character who you saw do some vicious things and then suddenly be like, oh, but he's a good guy now. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of stuff, and even stuff that, like you mentioned, doing for other people that he's not exactly, you know, with, with Cersei and and Joffrey or whatnot, it, not exactly the best people to to be doing these things for, but because he's doing them in his mind for love. Yeah, and you have to look at it through his lens. Like, Joffrey is his son. Yeah. I'm sure all of our parents have looked at us when we've been little shits, and they still love us, and they would still do anything for us. And, like, I know it's really hard because Joffrey is so awful, but, like, you sort of have to approach it <laughs> from that point of view, and it, it makes Jamie. It makes Jamie a little bit more sympathetic. And I think particularly when he's saying the vows as he is knighting Bran, like, um, be just for the father, something for the warrior, and protect the innocents for the, for the mother. Those are all things that Jamie didn't do. But now that he's in the position that he's in, he really understands that oath in a way that he, you can tell he probably didn't when he was 16 and the same thing was told to him. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, breaking for Breaking away from Cersei has now kind of now he can be who he wants to yeah. be because ultimately because of his love. I mean, I know it's weird we're talking this sister brother thing yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> let's imagine we're not. Um, <laughs> because of his love for her, he he is kind of blinded by the things Absolutely. that he's had had to do, and and he's kind of free of that now, and, and now he kind of is probably contemplating a lot of stuff like really shouldn't have done that. I think his breaking from Cersei is a lot like 
of puberty and just go with mm-hmm. me on this because similar to his of his identity in the beginning is like i am cersei's twin mm-hmm. together we are two halves of a whole and so he does so many things in service of her and in service of her goals and what she wants and uh, even her pleasure and it's not until he is physically separated from her for the first time in the in the series obviously they were separated before when he is sent off and then gets captured and meets Brienne for the first time and now that he's elected to leave her behind We've seen who he can be on his own as his own man stepping out of her shadow, the shadow, or maybe her skirts is a, yeah. is a more apt uh, metaphor. Um, so on the similar topic, now that we kind of had this episode, which, which is almost like a judgment of Jamie Lannister totally, in I mean, the beginning, yeah. where they're like kind of weighing his crimes versus his his uh, heroic deeds. Mm-hmm. One, do you think he's redeemed already, or do you think he needs to do something else to redeem himself? And is that dying in battle? Ooh, I for the greater good. I, you know, sure. Um, I think in the eyes of the viewers, I do think he's redeemed. Okay. I think we came into this season with most people being like, "Yeah, Jamie's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm here for it. I'm here to see him." Be a hero and really step up before I think we all sort of agreed in that episode that he's going to bite it maybe yeah. before he dies in the end, him and Cersei. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be tougher for the composite characters. I understand why Danny wouldn't want him anywhere near her. Oh, yeah. Um, I understand why for Sansa, she's not interested either, particularly with her history with the Lannisters, even more than Danny, um, but why she is willing to accept him based on Brienne's sort of recommendation mm. her 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 letter where she badged for him uh but it comes down to they need him like john even though john doesn't have a lot to say in that decision john nails it like we need every man we can get and even uh crippled which i think is an unfortunate phrase um even even maimed as jamie is he's more of an asset so he's worth having around instead of presenting it there. But I think in terms of the the narrative audience, I think he's redeemed. Do you mm-hmm. agree? Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I think so. And I think he will give his life uh, in service of the greater good. Do you think he's going out in the battle? No, I don't think so. It's, I think it would be a mistake mm-hmm. from the story. Like Theon, that makes more yeah, sense, it's, right? For him to die at Winterfell, yes. yeah. Where Jamie, it's like his story hasn't ended yet. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yes, we got this kind of this trial of him, but I think that in order for his character to go full arc, it has to concern Cersei in some way, whether he kills her, Mm -hmm. she kills him. Like, can you imagine if, like, Bronn shows up and shoots Jaime and goes, ha-ha, that was for Cersei. Like, how upset people would be. I will be be living. (laughs) Like, that's it? (laughs) That's, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) Bronn is... That's interesting. I kind of thought we were going to see Bronn this episode, but he's an interesting complication yeah. um, to the whole Lannister thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I did think the trial was going to go on for longer, though. I know this episode was a lot of sitting around and talking to some people's taste, not to some other people's taste, um, but I kind of thought we wrapped up that trial real quick. I kinda, oh, yeah. I kinda uh, thought, he's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, we need him. Okay. Which, I mean, I get it. That was the conclusion we were going to come to. We weren't going to throw him in the dungeons. We don't have the time for that. Um, but I sort of thought we were going to hear a little bit more maybe from Jamie. I don't know. I was surprised how quickly we wrapped that up. Yeah. And it, that's what happens when you have six episodes. And, I get it, man. Know. And this was, what, a 50? 50, 53 minute long yeah, episode. Yeah, wasn't this was a one, long, of our, one of our shorter ones. Yeah, because it's really just a part two to the first episode last week. Absolutely, yeah. And so they just want to like, okay, uh, let's let's get on. And then we know next week is a longer episode, and it'll probably be you know ninety percent battle, mm-hmm. you know, and not much talking to, yeah. to it. Dennis, for you, is there anything that Jamie still needs redeeming or you still want to see done for his character before he probably bites it? Um, Other than obviously a big final confrontation with Cersei. Yeah, I think that might be it. I, I think he's, you know, they had that moment with him and Bran for a reason mm-hmm. so that it would be like, oh, he's like, are you you're not mad at me? He's like, no, no. I'm good. I'm yeah. cool. I'm beyond you. You know, that's basically what he's saying. It's like you, you you, doing this to me is like nothing compared to like what we have coming to us, you know? Yeah. So I, I think that would be the main thing because the rest of it, you know, yeah, he did fight Ned Stark and what. So he didn't kill Ned Stark. And a lot of the, you know, remember, even Cersei didn't want Ned Stark killed. She's like. And no, it was, it was Joffrey. It was Joffrey. She wanted him to go to the wall. Mm-hmm. Like. 
be, you know, humiliated, Humble, dishon yeah. dishonored, but hey, we still need the Starks. We'll get one of the younger, more manageable ones because, you know, they they were going to go to war over Ned Stark being uh, captured. Yes. But if he had been like, hey, okay, I admit my crimes, even though he didn't really do any of that stuff, and he went to the wall, like Rob Stark would have been like, well, now what am I going to do? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, like he, even, even if he knows that it's not true, He's admitted it in front of all the people. They he's all perjured know himself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to the wall with Jon Snow. It's like, well, he, he would kind of have to stop his, you know, his war, his mm -hmm. rebellion for, for the North. And so. Um, and then what would we be watching? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that like if it didn't happen. It's like, OK, well, we've been a much, much better place. Better. Yeah. Because, you know, I always talk about the uh, Renly Baratheon thing. It's like he had the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, he made that he was making that deal with. I mean, they hadn't settled on it, but it was pretty much set, right? Yeah. All all Rob had to say was, "Okay, I agree," mm -hmm. and I think I think he would have, and they would have won that war, and then split the kingdom in half. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he needs to, but I think he will die. I don't see his purpose of his character to continuing on mm -hmm. past after this, after Cersei. It, it, that's why I think it, he still has purpose after this battle with the White Walkers and the mm -hmm, Whites and mm -hmm, the Night King. Mm -hmm. But after fighting Cersei and having her perish or be defeated or whatever. And whatever's going on with this supposed baby. Yeah. Which, which that's is, like a dangling participle that I need more information about. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just don't see where he lands mm -hmm. at that point. Like we already have. And that's why like I'm like, oh, Brienne. Maybe she's still gonna live just because I can I can see her. I think we mentioned before, like she could be in the Queen's Guard, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. on whatnot. Or if for some reason Jon Snow survives, but I don't think he is. I think it's I think he's dying. Yeah, yeah. I, you come I, around to that? <laughs> I, I just think because I know you were fifty fifty on whether yeah. it was gonna be Jon or Danny. Yeah, so. but I'm I'm leaning more towards Jon mm -hmm. now. But it, it would be like the last episode. It'd be oh yeah 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 for sure. Yeah, because I don't think just killing the Night King or whatnot. Who knows? Maybe that will happen. There's like a double death <laughs> yeah. for them both. Um, but I just don't see them not continuing on this thing that they've set up between mm -hmm. Danny and, and Jon Snow about his parentage. Like, why bring that up? Why, why have that all stuff and have it? end up not mattering at because all. He, because he dies in like episode four or whatever, yeah, three yeah. or four. Yeah, so, I agree. So I, I do think I'm leaning more towards his death, but who knows? Maybe Danny dies, but I don't know. It's uh, it's tough. We've got to set up a betting pool for all the listeners. I know. <laughs> John or Danny or both. <laughs> yeah, we probably should do a video next week before uh, the, the review. And who come, dies? Yeah, and guess. <laughs> well, let's put money down. <laughs> Who, who's going to die? And then put them out there. Because, you know, there are certain ones that are more well, there's certain likely. certain characters that narr like narratively, Theon. yeah, it will, will make sense. Tormund. You know, I think Bran. Bran. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of characters that, that could possibly die. I don't think Sansa's dying. No, I think of all the Starks, I think Sansa has the best chance of survival. Yeah, I think she's gone through so much. I think I, we said that in our episode. Yeah. I don't know, guys. It was so long yeah. ago. <laughs> I, I just don't see it. So, Jamie, I don't think he's dying. At the battle. In, in, at the battle. Yeah, I agree. Episode, but, yeah. but later on, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. And, and, you know, it has to do with the actor, too. Uh, much like I know to your chagrin that I... I'm a fan of the Cersei character. I know. Crushes me, Dennis. And it has to, <laughs> and it has to do with Lena Headey as an actress. Absolutely. I, she's fa fabulous. Um, because the way she's able to deliver lines and be able to... Uh, and, and they mention it, too, in, in this episode. Weave the truth mm -hmm. to uh, manipulate people uh, she plays um she plays very strong powerful characters like in sarah connor chronicles yeah uh, very which well I, lo very I, lo I love that show are you pro uh short hair for cersei do you like the little wig um you know i i liked i liked her before with one of the reasons too that i, I like her so much is she had a lot of great dialogue conversations with mm -hmm. like king robert 
They have a really you, heartbreaking conversation where you almost think that they've sort of come to a peace, yes. and then he tells her, like, I never loved you. It was always yeah, Leanna. Exactly, and you're like, exactly. oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. So, th- that, you know, you, you can be empathetic to what she's been through. And, mm-hmm. Yes, and she was fantastic in Sarah Connor Chronicles, which is a very underappreciated show. I agree. That most people have never seen because they were like, oh, it's Terminator. And they're like, there's no Terminators in here. And it was actually a very, much like an HBO show where like, yeah, it's actually not that much action. It's mostly dialogue and character driven. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got that. Um, anything else you want to talk about with Jamie? I don't know. I think we did a good job covering it. I think it's going to be really sad that uh, the love of Jamie's life is ultimately going to be his downfall because he's he never he's not out of love with Cersei. You no. know, like he'll never get over that. That connection is so strong, even though he knows she's like a maniac. Um, so she will represent like the his best and worst aspects. Like she is his she's mirror universe. <laughs> Jamie and I think um, that's very Shakespearean in how tragic it is that he is faced with his flaws he became better for it but it's ultimately going to destroy him Jamie's a sad character yeah well speaking of this Shakespearean tragedy mm-hmm. I feel like um, and of course these last two episodes we're kind of missing a little of that not so much like oh let's you know kill everyone off but I feel like even in the next episode with people are dying in that next episode no matter oh, what yeah. yeah but I feel like the deaths that are going to come later in the series mm-hmm. are going to be more impactful, not from a who who is dying, but the way they're going to die. Because yes. dying in this battle to me is like, okay, you know. Some people's deaths, I think, are they're just bound to be unsatisfying. Yes. Because um, we don't have the geography to make every death the center point of an episode the way we did in season one or five, even five or six. You know, it... We're, I bet at least three people die next yeah. episode, which means like right after the other. That's like almost one an act. Yeah. And then also like the motivation behind it. I mentioned this in, in previous episodes. It's like, well, you're fighting the, the whites and the white war. You know, like. Yeah. Which I get. What, we're supposed to be hyped up about it. And they're like, this is for humanity. Yeah, it's not just for no. the kingdom. But it's like, OK, but you're going to be done with it in episode three. So. That and then like you're not invested in that. Right. Yeah. You're invested. You're invested in Jamie Lannister and Cersei Lannister and their relationship. And yeah. And if they, let's say, do what you particularly like a double kill mm-hmm, each other, mm-hmm. like you're going to be like, or if Jamie kills her because she's the Mad Queen and he becomes a Queen Slayer, whatever. We're going to have emotional resonance with that yeah. versus what's happening next week. Yeah. You know, we'll have emotional resonance with the character itself because they're because they're dying. Mm-hmm. But this one will be like because of the relationship. It, or that has the potential to be truly gut-wrenching. Yeah. Like ugly crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So look forward to that. So uh, actually, where can people find you? People can find me and they can send me pictures of Nikolai Kosterwaller with his shirt off at <laughs> Ashley V. Robinson. The V is very important. Catch me every week here on What the Thrones, Talking Thrones with Dennis and all of our fabulous friends. And check out my podcast, Geek History Lesson, at geekhistorylesson.com. We have a live event coming up in May. Please buy tickets. Dennis, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Here, our Instagram, dennis.tzng. And yeah, you can follow us on our weekly uh Game of Thrones reviews, well, for when the show is on. (laughs) Uh, On Sundays, we do it live right after the episode. The episode drops at 6, and then when it's done, we kind of take a little break for about like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. to kind of talk over what we're going to talk about. And then we go. I think the last two weeks we've done 7.30 Pacific time, Mm -hmm. but uh, next week it's probably going to be 8 because next Longer episode. Longer episode. So stay tuned for that. So... I uh, hope you guys uh, had fun listening or watching to this. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider videos, or subscribe to our Collider Factory or Collider TV Talk feed. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.